G'day watchers, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, what I hope will be a fairly quick review uh, of an update of a previous model. So yes, spinnaker watches, let's just get into this typical blue packaging uh, box which they come with, you know, cushion, uh, tag, cleaning cloth and influencer guide. I'm not going to go into those. You've probably seen me uh, done that many times and you're probably sick of it by now. So I'm just going to get into the watch here. So guys, this is uh, the Spinnaker Brandner SP5062-05. So 05 for this color variation, which is this kind of sunburst blue, which I really like. It's probably quite difficult for me to show that, but it is actually a sunburst blue pattern. There you go. You can see uh, some of that there. So there was a previous version of the Bradner, uh, which I reviewed a while back. That was the 5057 model. This is the 5062, which is an upgrade with various improvements that they have made to the watch. Uh, now this is going to be uh, released for sign up uh, and pre-order pretty soon. Uh, I don't have a confirmation on the price uh, right now, but I will put the, the details uh, down here if I get confirmation from Sminica uh, about the pricing of this watch. The previous price was $285. Uh, so Brandner again is an uh, homage to the physicist and dive pioneer Hugh Brandner uh, who was uh, of uh, Manhattan Project fame so he was involved in the Manhattan Project uh, you know designing the nuclear uh, bomb as well as uh, being hailed as a designer of the wetsuit the modern dive wetsuit. Okay, enough about Hugh Bradner because this is probably nothing directly to do with the historical feature, as is the want for Spinnaker uh, to do. Uh, they tend to kind of take the names of historical figures. Right, so this sign up does have uh, the uh, advantage of, uh, you know, if you do sign up early, you get a bonus rubber strap. So this is Spinnaker strap program, uh, Tropic Rubber, so Tropic Perforated Rubber. So you, I'll just show it to you. Uh, it does have a waffle pattern and it does have diamond perforations in, uh, in uh, this vulcanized rubber strap, which, you know, it's actually quite pleasing to the feel here. Unfortunately, uh, this is a 22 millimeter strap they sent me for various other promotions. So this one doesn't actually go uh, with this Bradner. It's actually a little bit too large. Uh, but of course, if you do sign up and get the bonus strap, it'll come in the 20 millimeter to suit this watch. Okay, so getting into the movement here now. Right, this is uh, of course uh, none other than a Seiko NH35A, same as the original Bradner. Uh, details down the left there, I'm not going to go into uh, the specific details because you've seen this ad nauseum, I think. In terms of rated accuracy, minus 20 plus 40 is typical. In actual use, this is actually pretty darn good in terms of its regulation. This is running minus 2 seconds per day as far as I've used it so far. Okay, so that's the movement. Now, getting into the case here, then the case is 42 millimeter diameter, 316 L steel. Thickness is actually 14.8 millimeters. So it is actually fairly thick. You know, the previous thickness was 14 millimeters. So this is slightly thicker than the previous Bradner. Uh, lug width I've mentioned there is 20 millimeters, and the lug to lug distance, same as the previous watch, is 50 millimeters between my thumbs there. Uh, overall weight with leather strap is actually 100 grams. So again, this is a little bit more substantial than the previous Bradner, which weighed in at 90 grams when I reviewed it. Okay, so finishing now. The finishing is actually fully brushed. Right? It's completely brushed all over, not a single polished surface except for, I think, the tops of the crowns there. Okay, the actual case itself fully brushed. Right, circular brushing uh, you can see there on the bezel as well as circular brushing all around the base there. Uh, moving on to the lugs is actually a longitudinal brushing and if you look at the side, uh, you know, pleasingly they've transitioned this again. It's actually a vertical brushing that you can see there uh, on the side there. Okay, so, so overall, of course, this is a case that mimics a super compressor that was famous in the, I think, the late 50s and 60s. So they had super compressor cases in uh, many divers. This one, I, I don't think is a true super compressor because it's sapphire, it's not acrylic. Uh, it doesn't seem to have the, the true construction of a super compressor, but certainly it is actually mimicking uh, the look and the feel of a super compressor case. 
So you saw that the uh, case back there, which is a display case back showing the Seiko movement inside and that decorated rotor. So screw in display case back and screw in main crown, which is the one at the four o'clock position. The water rating here is 180 meters. So previously it was 150 meters on the Bradner. They've actually improved that slightly to 180 meters, which is actually a little bit of an odd rating. I, I don't think I've ever seen a watch on this channel at 180 meters. They're usually 150, uh, 200 or 300. That tends to be where they sit. Okay, so now I just want to just turn this uh, back actually because I want to put it to the optimal position to show off the, the dial of this watch here and screw that back down. So moving on to the dial here, this is, as I've mentioned, is actually a very subtle deep blue sunburst dial. Hopefully you can see some of that sunburst as I like, let the light uh, catch it there. Okay, so that's really what it has. It does have a printed, uh, you know, automatic and water resistant rating there. The spinnaker is slightly embossed, but I don't think it's actually an applied uh, brand name. All around the side though, you do have uh, these applied uh, markers and it's got a black chapter ring around the periphery there. So hopefully that comes through. It really is a little bit difficult to use that black uh, chapter ring, but you know, I think they're going for a certain uh, look uh, for this watch here. Right, if it's got simple uh, baton hands with a modified hour that has, a, I guess, a wider section than the and an hour hand, and you know, simple square and rectangular uh, applied markers that are filled with superluminova. So it's got this patina type of superluminova, and that also goes on to the bezel markings that you can see there. And of course, right here, I'll put a loom shot for you to appreciate how it looks like in the dark. Okay, and then just showing you the bezel, it does have an internal rotating bezel, uh, and that's functions why, via this two o'clock position crown there. They said they've improved the gearing of the bezel, and it does feel very, very smooth. Uh, in fact, perhaps even too smooth. If you look at it, I'll just put it there, and if you just accidentally, you know, just touch it, just flick it, you know, you can see even just a slight touch, I'm actually turning the bezel there. So I, I don't know about that function, you know, it's bi-directional, it's not unidirectional, uh, and I'm not sure about the, the, the true dive function there when you can turn it so easily. If you're a diver, if you're going to use a watch like this, let me know your thoughts. I'm interested to hear uh, how that may function in real life timing. Of course, at home, if I was just going to use this to time, I don't know, something in the oven or something, it probably is fine because uh, I'm not doing anything rough. It may be a different story if you were swimming underwater in scuba. Okay, so on top of the, the dial there is a pretty nice uh, sapphire crystal. So it's flat around the, the, the middle there, but it does have a nice curve on the side, you know, it kind of curves down there and does have improved anti-reflective coating is what they have uh, said. And I, I think it is actually better than the previous brand. Now, I don't have the watch anymore to compare it side by side, otherwise you'll see it here. But I, I think this is better than it used to be just from memory. All right, so that's the case description. Moving on to the band here, uh, nothing very special. Unfortunately, this is what they call a, a stitched uh, waterproof leather. This one is a tan color. I chose this specific color combination to go with the blue dial. Uh, you know, I think this is the best looking one to my choice. They do come in, I think there's a PVD case. There's a different uh, color uh, dials that you can see on the website there, but I chose this one specifically because I, I, I fancy this color combination. Right on top of the, the uh, band here is a just a typical brushed uh, buckle that Spinnaker typically comes from. So nothing too special on the band there. All right, so that's the description of the watch that's just put on for the wrist shot. Okay guys, so there we have it. The Spinnaker Brandner 5062, the new Brandner on my 17 centimeter wrist. Remember 50 millimeter lug to lug distance, 42 millimeter diameter case. I think it suits me uh, just at, just right. You know, it is on the borderline uh, of what is acceptable for my wrist. And just to show you, it does ride pretty high at nearly 15 millimeters in thickness. Okay, that's how it looks like on the wrist. So guys, what do I find uh, are the good things about this watch? You know, same as the previous Bradner, the original Bradner 
from Spinnaker. I think it's a neat different design, you know, this the super compressor mimic, which, you know, whilst it's not a true compressor case, I think it's a nice little look that they've gone for in terms of the vintage feel. It's got a pretty nice handset. I, I do appreciate the different handset here with the owl marker. It's a, less of a copy of anything else, unlike many other Spinnakers, which may use Mercedes hands and whatnot. I, I do appreciate the choice of the handset here. You know, you're getting that Seiko movement, that, that reliable NH35, and you're getting a pretty lovely uh, sapphire crystal on the top here. Uh, now, in terms of the improvement over the original product, uh, just to reiterate, they say that the AR coating is improved. I think it is. I think the, the bezel gearing, they say it's improved. It is also improved subjectively as I feel it, it is a lot smoother working, this bezel. Uh, the loom is better. And yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna say that maybe it's marginally better. The spinnaker loom doesn't tend to last through the night. Uh, this one may be marginally better than the first one, which also only lasts a couple of hours. Uh, the water resistant rating is objectively better at 180 meters and lastly they do say the strap is better but personally i don't see a difference i think this is just a typical relatively poor quality spinnaker strap that you probably want to swap out immediately if you were going to get this watch all right weakness all right it's a bit slabby you know i, I showed you that wrist shot and at 15 millimeters or nearly 15 millimeters it does ride pretty high on the wrist and you know one wonders whether that could have been done uh, better it's definitely a casual sports style overall you're not going to try to slip this under a suit uh, especially with that thickness i think uh, now i would say also i've mentioned this already the chapter ring is very dark very difficult to use except in bright sunlight as well as the bezel minutes right there are minute markings on this bezel here uh, there are dots there and hopefully you can see uh, those dots as I try to let the light fall on it but you know again it's black on black and very difficult to use one wonders why they didn't try to make it a little bit more visible you know that's just a little bit of a curiosity to me and then lastly I'll say again a very average strap nothing to write home about and I also don't see how this is an improvement okay guys so there we go that's my thoughts on this new improved bigger badder and bolder brander spinnaker sp62 let me know your thoughts on this model and what you feel about it uh, and any other spinnaker watches you may own if you have experiences with this brand itself uh, guys thank you for watching i put out new content every week always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology thank you again for sticking with me and as always i will catch you guys again next time